Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're going to show you something that's been requested many, many times, and it's really come into its own. And it has to do with welding aluminum, and not just normal aluminum. Uh, we have all these new cars that are coming out, especially the F-150 Ford pickup. It's got a lot of aluminum on it. So how do you, how do you repair it? What's the best way to repair it? And I've been following this for a few years now, and I've had a lot of people comment, a lot of people write in, and I certainly would like for you to write in as well. But here's what the deal is. How do you repair a small repair? Do you replace an entire quarter panel? Do you, do you go in and cut it? Uh, when you're welding steel, it's a different story. Welding aluminum, we're going to describe what the pitfalls are. So today we're going to do a, a, the first of many, many series of how to repair your F-150, and, and they're going to have the F-250 as well. So if you've watched some of these shows, I've seen the testing commercials on TV uh, where they've got the Chevy and the GMC uh, or, or the Ford comparison. They're dropping things in the truck beds, and they damage the truck beds. Well, all of us have been involved in steel for a long time so it's pretty easy to go in there and MIG weld it because it's fairly heavy material uh, it, it's easy to go in and weld <clears throat> and seal the back side aluminum is a different animal so this one caller uh, that asked me about this said that uh, they are presently doing repairs and they've been recommended by Ford to do a couple of different repairs. And I, I listened to him and I thought, well, gosh, there's probably 2,000 different types of repairs. So I want to show you one that you can use for welding. Now, first of all, the pretense was that you could weld this thin wall aluminum very precisely uh, using the MIG process or a spool gun. Uh, the reality is you can't. You, you can go ahead and buy the equipment, do all this, but you can't control the puddle well enough. And I'll, I'll show you why in just a few minutes. Now, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind is we've got a 5000 series aluminum and the manufacturers, they're trying to come up with the best corrosive resistant aluminum uh, that's out there. Uh, and that's a good deal. But the fact is you, you never want to lap it. If you can avoid it, don't lap this because even if you make a weld here, and you turn it over on the back side, in many cases you can't seal this, so you're going to get corrosion in there, and it's, it's not going to be pretty a few years down the road. Uh, so anyway, insurance companies are going to get involved in this. The best way to weld this is to butt weld. And when I say butt weld it, the tighter the fit, the better. Now in steel you can get by with gaps and things like that. Aluminum, you're going to have to cut that fit much tighter. So here's what I'm going to recommend. This is 50 thousandths uh, wall thickness. You're going to be cutting a patch out. You're going to butt weld it. You want it perfectly flush, perfectly tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack weld uh, to it just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to lift it up as though I could not reach the backside. I'm going to do a welding technique that is probably used 90% of the time and it's incorrect. And then I'm going to show you what you need to do to, to do your weld repair. We do need fusion on the backside. We need wetting on the backside and it's not all that easy. So let me show you a few tips and uh, I'll get my gear on. I'm going to tack it. And the first part of this plate, I'm going to show you probably something that's pretty, that looks good. Uh, you, can, you can file it down real easy. And then I'm going to show you the technique that you really need to use. So let me get my gear on. I'll join you in just a few minutes. Okay, now I've got my plate set up. It's only about 50 thousandths thick, but you're going to see a variance in these uh, different repairs. You're going to see 50 thousandths, 60, and you may get as high as 80 thousandths thickness. So I've taken two plates. I've butted them together, basically no gap whatsoever, and I've tacked it in three places, and that's just to keep it from well, you know, walking around on you. You're going to want to do that on your on your truck or vehicle, whatever you're welding on. You're going to want to put at least uh, you know a tack about every inch. But here's what I'm going to show today is I'm going to show two techniques. And technique number one is what I call the normal welding technique in, in your everyday fabrication. This is a technique that you would use. Then I'm going to show you a second technique. So let me let me show you the first one, and it's nothing more than what I've shown in the past. Uh, when you're welding aluminum, you got to see the puddle, dab, 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 and you're looking for a very positive buildup as you add filler. Now, just so you know, when you make a tack in aluminum, make sure that you dab filler in. Don't make a tack even though it looks good. What'll happen is it'll crack. It's, it'll have hot short cracking and 
and you'll see a crack form right down the middle. So always dab just a little bit of this filler in there. Okay, so this, this technique was just a very light duty weld, and you can see I got a nice crown on it. Uh, it looks clean. You can see cleaning action on each side of the weld. You know, it, um, it, it wets out nice on the top. I want to show you now, here's a technique, and it's, it's, very, it's very easy to do, but it's a mindset. You have to watch the puddle, and you have to watch it sink. And when you see it sink, you, you get gun shy and you try to back off the foot control. So this is almost overkill. In fact, it is overkill. I'm trying to wet out the back side. Top side isn't a big concern because as you well know, you're gonna do some polishing and things to that anyway. So again, this is primarily for the, for the body, body type repair business. A Little more amps, a little slower speed, and a little bit more filler. Okay, so you can see that the second technique, certainly wider, you can see it drop down. And, and again, don't worry about aluminum falling out on you. In the TIG welding process, you can control it really well. So there is very little crown on this whatsoever. Most of it dropped to the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off, turn it over, and show you the plate. Okay, so this was the weld right here that I started with. It didn't penetrate. Now, it's a, it was a good looking weld and it would hold, but the problem is you get corrosion, you get salt water corrosion in here, and pretty soon it's gonna rot out on you, literally rot out on you. So you wanna make sure that you use the other technique. Make sure it's hotter, slower, let it wet out wider, and it's a very flat weld. That's the penetration right there. There's no gas backup. And just keep in mind that you don't have access to this back side. So use this technique. I'm using a 5356 filler material, 1 16th diameter, and it's a good uh, uh, corrosion preventing filler material. So uh, when, when you have a choice, the 5000 series is probably likely what you're gonna use on most of this. So we're gonna do a series of these things. We're gonna get into the truck beds, we're gonna get into corner sections. This just happens to be one of those sections where you don't have access to the back side, Cut your patch out, put it in, make it a perfect fit, tack weld every inch. And I'm only using a 1 16th tungsten. Uh, my machine is, it's only a 125 amp machine. And I was only using about 50 to 60 amps of it. So you don't have to buy a big machine to make this work. Now, we're gonna give you more information. You can always go to our notes and, and uh, our, our information on the show. So just know that uh, I'll give you the setup. I use a 2% thoriated tungsten just because I like it the best. So thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.